Freddy intensifying along the coast of Madagascar on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March the 6th. Here's the latest showing Freddy has certainly re-entered the scene and has strengthened somewhat as it nears the coast of Madagascar. It's hovering right on the coast right now with winds estimated probably around 65 miles per hour although sources are quite varied right now. In the Atlantic though it's 87 days until hurricane season. There's nothing of interest here which is good news. Uh, hardly anything at all to talk about in the whole ocean to be honest. And the US looking fairly quiet after the severe weather moved past earlier in the week. In the south southern hemisphere across Australia, a 20% zone of interest there in the Gulf of Carpentaria. A uh, small chance that that might develop or redevelop if you ask me. Another area of interest has just entered the fray in the southwest Indian Ocean not far from the island of Rodrigues and Freddy of course churning up the coast off uh, the western part of Madagascar. We covered that in more detail earlier on in a storm update and no doubt we'll have more throughout the course of the next few days. Expected to turn northwestwards and impact Mozambique. And here's the Cyclone Graveyard, Kevin and Judy, both remnant lows now spinning in tandem uh, down there in the extratropical zone of the South Pacific, no threat to land over a very sparse area of water. Satellite imagery across the globe looks like this right now. Look out for those red zones that show high amounts of precipitation. Freddy not particularly well noticeable there until the later part of that loop. Quite a small system really, um, although its influence is quite broad. The rain core, you could say, isn't. Over Northern Australia though, quite a bit going on there as well, it should be mentioned. Here is the Southwest Indian Ocean and you can see Freddy there, that big, that little core there of convection and a lot of influence stemming out mainly towards the south and east. It did reside further west earlier on but it was shoved out eastwards probably from wind shear and this is a view of the storm from the Force 13 website which we now have new animated satellite imagery products for all storms as they happen. I've been waiting for this for years, it's great news. Uh, compiled by and created by our uh, great magician, I like to call him, Jason, I'm bigging him up there. But this is Freddy, you can see there affecting the coast of Madagascar and probably moving more inland, or at least more eastwards than first thought. Uh, how might that change the forecast later on? Probably not much, although it will move more slowly towards Mozambique. Uh, but interestingly, the models have solidified somewhat on the Mozambique landfall. Here over Australia, there's that other area of interest, extremely broad system this one, uh, and just got some slow rotation going on, it's right along the coast of the Queensland uh, Northern Territory border. Sea surface temperatures look decent in the central and eastern Pacific in the deep tropics, up at around 78 degrees Fahrenheit which is nearly 26 Celsius. Similar temperatures in the Caribbean Sea, 26 degrees plus there, entering the main bulk of the Atlantic. Temperatures will take a little while to warm up here, we're still three months from hurricane season but we are halfway through the off season now. In the North Indian Ocean, decent temperatures, especially further east, 28 degrees at least, and the Bay of Bengal looking good as well, especially further east again, uh, 28 degrees. Down where Freddy is, temperatures are uh, actually marginal, but they'll warm up a little bit more as the storm heads towards Mozambique, temperatures nudging 27 degrees up there. A little bit of a cool area near the Masserine Islands as well, but further north and east, temperatures are better, 28 degrees plus. The coast of Australia, very warm as usual in the west, uh, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius easily, and 28 across the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, Coral Sea, 27 plus there, and in the South Pacific, temperatures looking good there too. We might see a few more systems yet over there. And in the Western Pacific, it's looking like this right now. Temperatures are once again fairly decent in the lower latitudes, uh, pushing up to 27 degrees Celsius. A little bit cool right now in the South China Sea. In fact, look at that. A very big cold anomaly has appeared there in the South China Sea. The rest of the Western Pacific, though, a little bit above average. 
La Nina, what's left of it? Looks to continue to be ebbing away in the South Pacific, looking pretty good right now for the anomalies. Cool, though, around the northern coast of Australia. Southwest Indian Ocean also bouncing up there, too. Above average there right now. And taking a look at the oceanic heat content, look out for the turquoises and higher. Decent conditions spreading across the cold sea towards Australia there. You often get late season April time, usually is a good time over there in the cold sea for late season storms, certainly. And in the Western Pacific, uh, it is still uh, continuing to grow a little bit around Guam and a little spot or two in the Eastern Pacific. Believe it or not, that's almost the same as what we had in the peak season last year over there. So I think the Eastern Pacific will be a little bit more active. Computer models, this is the GFS for the next five days, showing that Freddy will reattain hurricane equivalent status and then nudge towards the northwest, a slow landfall there, which will mean arduous conditions on the coast and a lot of rainfall expected, uh, especially near the landfall zone. We'll go on to precipitation shortly. And GFS also develops the other little system there, not far from Rodrigues. That's towards the end of that five day period, shooting off towards the southeast. South Pacific, there you can see the two remnant uh, tropical cyclones there, uh, but further north, near the uh, probably near Samoa actually, just southeast of there, another short lived system perhaps, or at least a weak one, forms and gradually moves towards the southeast. Uh, whether that affects any other land areas over there, not sure yet, uh, but the initial part of it just, just nabbing the coast of American Samoa as it moves off there. Precipitation for the southwestern Indian Ocean then and once again it is a dangerous picture of extremely high amounts of rain in some of these areas and even the smaller amounts of rain will be adding on top of a pretty um, well it would exacerbate affairs there right now with of course lots of rainfall being received across the whole region. Look down there towards Mozambique and inland further inland over Africa. Uh, looking at significant rainfall amounts and in Madagascar looking in excess of seven inches so towards 200 millimeters but in Mozambique along the coast near Kelimani which is the current expected landfall zone over 15 inches of rainfall possible there that's pushing 400 millimeters thankfully though the worst part of it stays out at sea where you can see there not far from 30 inches in some spots if this forecast verifies in the longer range, day 5 through 10, you can see that system once again there, but another one takes the stage near Fiji and moves through the island there, uh, and then maybe a second little disturbance behind it. Both short-lived systems, and you know what, that weak system further east does last quite a bit longer, its remnants still visible there at the end of that 10 day period, it does a little interaction with another system there, uh, down in the South Pacific. I don't think there's any land areas over there, but don't quote me on that, hard to see on this view, and then they both end up going down there, complex situation. But that's all the serious stuff done with, you can find the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode or finding it in our links underneath the video and we are still showing off our still waiting for Hone t-shirt because my god we still are. In the silly range day 10 to 16 we're looking at the Australian region for another system to form in the coral sea and sometimes you get especially later on in the season storms moving westwards taking advantage of those higher um, oceanic heat content values that creep in later on and there is one system making a hurricane equivalent landfall in northern Queensland uh, probably not far from Cairns there if my geography serves me correctly there it is intensifying quite quickly possibly a category 2 landfall but it's very long range and that's not to be taken as gospel just yet you can chat about it though on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for all tropical affairs as well as other weather chat and even other sciences and geophysics covering our earthquakes team and whatnot. Lots going on in there. Well on this day there was a lot to talk about as well. Only one storm but what a powerful one it was. It was Cyclone Gafilo, an extremely powerful category 5 which was about to make one of the strongest ever landfalls on the coast of Madagascar 
on March the 6th, 2004. Can you believe it's been 19 years since this storm occurred? And what a pretty picture it made. Unfortunate that it was to go on to affect land in, in very short order and certainly caused devastation over Madagascar. One of the storms that featured in my top 100 last year in Hurricane Week. Back to this year and we're still waiting for anything in the Northern Hemisphere, thank goodness. And Arlene is first in the Atlantic, Adrian in the Eastern Pacific and Hone in the Central Pacific. We've been waiting for that one since 2019. We'll be getting grey hairs before it forms. In the Western Pacific, Sandvu is up next and in North Indian Ocean it will be Mocha. 11 storms so far this year which is probably a little bit low but if you factor in what those storms did or one of them let's say freddy uh, then it probably makes up those values let's not forget kevin which nearly reached category five the next name down there is lola in the southwest indian ocean it's fabian and in the australian region it's herman that's all from tonight's tropical weather bulletin we'll be back again tomorrow night <laughs>